left for the States. During that time, we were already more or less kind of known in the scene. Not popular or anything, you know, pero kilala na kami ng mga, ba mga banda din ba, ng community of bands. That's where we met Jeros Dolino, who eventually recorded Influence with us. They were looking for uh, a drummer at that time because their first drummer left for the U.S., Jed. We were all huge fans of Jeros' band at that time, Left of Center. We had a gig na nagkasabay yata kami in a place called Artist Days. We, we moved within the same circles. Uh, they were looking for a drummer who could do um, heavy stuff and reggae at the same time. And then we ended up talking, na parang, oh, I'm a fan. Parang, he, I like your songs, parang narinig ko sa radio. We asked Jeros kung, you know, parang, since you're a fan, we're looking for a drummer, would you be interested to, to play? Yung nag-promote na nung birth is si Jeros Dolina na. Siya yung drummer na nag-record nung Influence. They kind of saw me in one of the few gigs with a reggae band and a punk band. That's why they decided to get me. He, he jumped on board right away. I played uh, two songs in the first album and I played the entire second album. Jeros was the one who invited us. Let's record in Backyard Project, this new studio at that time. And then it was literally sa backyard lang ng bahay nung mayare si Sir Jones Moanya. Hi, my friend Moanya. I'm better known as Jones. I'm an architect by profession, but I also teach fine arts at the University of San Carlos, and I own the Backyard Project Studio. Uh, it's like this, para uh, practice studio, pero may recording. That's where we chose to record the albums, because everyone in the music scene in Cebu at that time was. Yeah, yun tambayan nila yung backyard. College days, we would hang out sa backyard studios. Time lang talaga na kung wala napasok lahat, doon na lang didiretso sa backyard. Tapos yun. And Urban na was <laughs> recording. The first album was recorded in backyard studios, which we, a lot of us, hang out. When they were recording in backyard project studios, uh, they were always there. We, we see each other. Kami sat kung sa kung banda si Sheila and Mrs. Wayne. Yeah, go there very often. Motik tambayanan si mga banda. We hang out all the time. The studio played a large part in, you know, the formation probably. Or the urban dub in its earliest form was way back in the late 90s. All those kids have known for a long time. Gabby, of course. John, who was a fine art student. I think he was under me. I don't know if he dropped out. And then, of course, Jeros, my one-time drummer also. And um, Lalay, I remember him, you know, hanging out. Put up a studio and then he got this guy called Mick Mick Demeterio, the producer that we had for Influence. So, veteran na rin siya sa Xena since the 90s with his bands like TSK. Okay, okay. Jerry's introduced us to that whole group, of the backyard people who eventually became our, our, our friends. And, we learned a lot from these people in terms of music and recording. Ah, chaka yung indie na mindset. Because at that same time when we were recording there, they were putting up their uh, indie independent label called Tiki Sound. Tiki Sound. It was fun watching them, watching the intensity with which they approached the whole recording process, the, the cleverness with which we had to make do with what they had, equipment wise, but still come up with the sound they wanted. At that time, okay lang naman kami kasi hindi naman namin alam yung professional studio talaga. Tsaka at that time, parang bagong-bago pa yung digital recording. Parang sila nag-experiment din ganun sa amin. Oh, tas magaling din kasi yung ano dun eh, yung sound engineer. We signed with Tiki Sound Records. So we released the album and started selling. We released it around 2001. Since tugtog kami ng tugtog, I still had a lot of songs. Mga kanta na I like pero hindi namin natapos in time to put it in birth. So I just continued writing and writing. So marami na akong baon coming into influence. But this time around, Dahil medyo nasanay na rin kami tumutugtog sa mga bars. I think nag-transition kami to be better musicians. Hindi na siya for fun na. In, in a lot of ways na parang, parang let's take this thing seriously. Even the writing changed, the content of, of the songs changed then. When we knew that being in a band was working for us, parang it was uh, immediate na. Let's do another record. 
only better. Conscious kami na, uh, ah, the song shouldn't be that long. Uh, there should be a story in every transition in the song. So, yun. That's how, I, I think that's how we wrote Influence. Parang nagkaroon ng direction. And a big part of that was soul searching. Soul Searching was the first song that I wrote and was the template for what Influence would be. The sound that we wanted to approach. I've recorded several albums over the years, but Influence is one of the, the hardest yet most fulfilling albums ever to record. As I remember correctly, so, uh, it took about almost a year of uh, recording and arranging before we got the final album out. Sa birth kasi magulo eh. Lahat ng mga Influence nandun eh. So it wasn't defined in influence we wanted to do is how do you marry yung mga different genres now it will sound seamless the flow of the arrangements in terms of the collaborative effort is not one-sided because gabi is the main composer the entire group actually contributes to the finished product so when we got into the studio to record the songs that would eventually become influence, prepared kami, may goal na. Nag-change na, nagkaroon kami ng goal and what to do na. Let's take this recording seriously and uh, take our time. The recording lasted around late 2001 and recording of the whole album ha, until 2003. But since we're already more or less known in the scene, we're playing bigger events. So we get in contact now with mga Manila bands that would arrive. We eventually met them backstage or whatnot. And then we'd invite them to another gig that we had, like in Ronnie's tattoo bar. Or somebody would invite them now. Oh, natin Urban Dub. I think the first band that ever saw us play was, I think, Sandwich yata. As a band, Sandwich, we did a promo tour sa Cebu. That's where we first saw them. Queso and Grounds when they come to Cebu and then panood kami ni 8. 8 even was trying to help us get signed. I heard them at Cebu, tapos I bugged them na come up with a demo. They were nice enough to hand me one. And you had a station in Cebu. The jocks over at the station were saying, na, Oh, you guys have to hear Urban Dub. Mike, our drummer, Mike Dizon, had already seen them, I think a year prior or the same year. Yung boss ko that time is Romel Sanchez. Sabi niya, samahan mo ako, papadala tayo sa Cebu. We're gonna check some uh, bands. Sabi, let's check namin. And naalala ko, all those road trips, kasi we were on tour, so CD player pa nun. Yung CD nila, paulit-ulit lang, I think it was six, seven songs. Tapos paulit-ulit lang sa tour, sa van, sa aeroplano. Sinasabi lang niyo yung fat boy may band yung sister ko eh. You, you need to see them, sabi ganun. Okay, panoorin na. Sige, panoorin namin. Sinasabi mo eh. <laughs> when they started playing, yung tunog nila pa, sabi ko, Pucha, ang galing! They were just, they just sounded massive. They were tight. And syempre, blown away talaga kami. As in, kasi yung massive yung sound nila, ang ganda ng mga songs, yung playing nila was tight. Yung, when you saw Urban Dub, you wanted to see them over and over again. We visited Cebu and they hosted a sandwich. They, they took us around. I think Silale just learned how to drive, probably didn't have a license, but she was driving us around. And it was pretty steady. They took us to eat like the best Cebu Lechon and all the other places. They didn't have us at beach. We spent a whole day at the beach with Urban Dub. I mean, just hanging out, just hanging out, you know. Eventually, st struck up a conversation with them. 
Sila Marie was saying that you should come to Manila, you should play. I used to be an announcer and also a music director for any 107 back in the 90s. And that's how I know Dub. And then I think we mentioned that, uh, yeah, we're recording an album now. Sana mapas namin si Indoro kasi Enyu Myrene was working for Enyu. You can give your demos. So, sa panood ko sila, Gabi, lahat sila nagbigay ng CD. Inuwi namin as uh, record executives. Dinala namin sa Manila. pag namin ng Manila, as soon as magkaroon kami ng time na makapag-commute, commute around the city to submit their demo, we did. And you have to remember that internet was not as big. Uh, no Facebook, no social media. There were Yahoo groups. Uh, meron ay Yahoo groups. So, uh, nakakatuwa that people actually got hold of their songs, got hold of their CDs. And then when they started playing here, man, people were already singing their songs. Ang kwento nila was, they started talking about us to the other bands na friends nila. So the buzz started. They were already as big as they were back then. They didn't know it. They did not know it. So, pagdating na rito, they were as shocked. Myrene had an event for NU. She invited us to, to do some gigs here in Manila. Oh, you guys wanna play here in Manila? First gig nyo, Marikina, and then we'll help you guys with other bar gigs para sulit yung trip ninyo. Na one week daw, kahit magstay kami one week sa Manila. And all we have to do is just get here. Ina inayos nila yung one week na gigs namin. Every day may gig, gano. Tapos ang sa amin lang is paano pagpunta. <laughs> Gabby was trying to look for a sponsorship para lang makapunta ng Manila. First time we went to Manila is by boat. Uh, tapos parang nagpa-sponsor yata. It was a uh, sponsorship. Para may dala-dala pa kaming streamer WGNA. <laughs> so what we did was we wrote a proposal letter sa WGNA, Super Ferry 12. Uh, we wrote a proposal letter, sent it. Kasi my parents had a contact somebody in WGNA. Yung deal was, we'll give you the tickets, round trip tickets, sa boat, pero you guys have to play on the boat. So we ended up covering acoustic lang, sublime songs, a few of our own original songs. Pero okay din eh, kasi wala naman nanonood sa amin eh. You know? Parang iba tulog, or iba kumakain lang ng itlog. <laughs> uh, nasa barko sila, tapos kailangan nilang mag-post sa barko. Tapos after nung Pag gigs dito sa Metro Manila, sabi niyo, bye-bye, magpo-post lang kami on stage. So maglalabas sila ng banner ng Super Ferry. Uh, tapos mag... But, you know, they, they, they made their way. I was having a day job and everything. And tapos si Jeros, Gabby and Lalay was on the boat. So naiwan ako. And I have to face my boss and say, I have to quit this job because my bandmates are already there in Manila and I have to follow. So yun. The funny thing, when we get here to Manila, we played that gig in Marikina. Was a gig in Marikina Riverbanks. Ah, uh, surreal. Just so in awe. I'm really here. Parang ganun. So when we played Riverbanks gig, we were very nervous. I mean, on my end, I was very nervous. But when we played, we were kind of surprised that people were actually singing along to our song. So that was a huge eye opener, especially for me. I didn't realize na papagigyan na palang kanta namin dito. Ang saya ng gig para kasi first time namin makadating ng Manila, literally fresh off the boat. And then, pag punta namin sa backstage, big event eh. And then all the bands that we look up to na napapanood lang namin sa TV, napapanood namin sa music bureau, <laughs> shows like that. Uh, I was shocked. That was the first time na uh, I played in the gig na ganun karami yung tao. We weren't really sure how people would react to us. Kasi first time nila kami mapapanood, first NU event namin. So we didn't also know how we were gonna play if some of us would fuck it up or pero pag tugtog namin it felt sakto eh swak yung yung vibe it felt right ba being on that stage just performing and then biglang when we started playing so searching for the crowd gulat kami that they knew the song not everybody not the whole crowd naman pero some people knew the song and they were moshing and from that day on I knew that this is gonna last for a long time for me
Jeros was playing with us the first few tours. Jeros Delino pa. And yun nga, eventually we were able to release Influence during that 2003 to 2004 na period. Nung natapos yung Influence, nung nare-record namin yung Influence, si Jeros Delino, no? Pumalis siya. Yun nga, like what I told you, um, we were overwhelmed when we got here. Me, most of all, actually, even if I was the oldest guy in the band. Um, I, I wasn't used to the attention, I didn't expect any of it, so I got tired. Basically, if I had to, I had to describe it in the fewest words possible. They were ready, and I was not. So that was it. So I kind of left the band after that. Tapos yung nag-promote na nung influence si Jan Jan Mendoza. We had to call Jan Jan. Magkabarkada talaga kami ni Gabi. Nung time dati, may isang studio doon sa Cebu doon kami. Nag-abot-abot ba? Iba-iba <laughs> uh, pa yung banda namin. Na. Tapos yun, naging close kami lahat. Doon na kami nag, ano ba, nagsimulang magka-influensya sa Estesa. Nung dati kasi niyayaya ako parati ni Gabi ipag wala silang drummer. Ako yung kinukuha nilang sessionista nung dati sa Cebu pa. Tumawag si Gabi sa akin, parang niyaya niya akong okay lang ba na maging ano na talaga full time sa urban dub. Jan Jan naman in Cebu would always, a lot of times would session for us pag wala si Jeros. Because Jan Jan had a band din in Cebu called Capsule. Nung 2003 na yun na si Jan Jan na yung pumalit, the first gig niya in Manila was Rock Awards agad. Yung Rock Awards, kinakabahan kami lahat eh kasi we know Rock Awards, um, we just watch Rock Awards in Cebu. Sa TV lang kasi namin pinapanood yun. Uh, that was also the first gig ni Jan Jan. Parang first na gig ko dito nila sa Manila, parang uh, malaki agad. Yun. Kinabahan siya pero ano eh, parang alam naman namin si Jan Jan, magaling naman siya na drummer talaga eh. So parang confident, confident naman kami. Uh, kinabahan pero hindi, hindi masyado eh kasi medyo comfortable na ako sa, sa kanila kasi. Yung inisip ko lang talaga, tumugtog lang. Uh, our song was nominated for Song of the Year, Soul Search. And the Song of the Year is... Soul Search by Urban God! And then they asked us to perform. That an lacking opportunity. Like you know, you only watch this on TV. Diko inexpect na may ma panalunan palang award. Masaya rin nao sa ano sa nangyari. Especially during that time, di ba? Rock awards big deal talaga rock awards. Ang saya lang namin ba na ganon na nanalo kami ng award. Song of the year palang yung soul searching. Kasi yun yung madalas sa sa airwaves. A lot of events started happening after the Rock Awards. Yun yung lucky break kasi even after Rock Awards, dun na kami inoferan ng to sign with the label. Actually, first time ko narinig ang Urban Dumb um, kay ano, sa Sugar Free. Alright, um, tama ako kay Jal, yung basis ng Sugar Free. No? May pinarinig siya sa aking music ng Urban Dumb. Um, tapos pinahigang ko, nagustuhan ko siya. Tapos, um, Pinitch ko sa boss ko, nagustuhan din ng boss ko. Then I found out na um, good friend pala ni Ebe, sila, sila Gab. So, hiningi ko yung number um, um, nung manager um, from Ebe. So, nakuha ko yung, yung number ni Alex Lim, manager ng Urban Dumb. So, that's the time na kinota ko yung bag and tinanong ko sa kanila kung di wanna sign up. Dito sa Manila kasi pwede mong gawing career. Decide na namin na mag lilipat kami dito para yun magawa namin na maging career talaga yung music. They were major hesitant at first kasi I think um, meron kasing ano before na diba if you sign up with a label parang sell out ka na. na if a label asks us to sign with them or if they're offering na sana pumayag sila na may full creative control tayo para we can keep our indie principles. 
like uh, we have uh, total control and creative. They didn't want to change whatever what we were doing. Being able to write an, the album that we want to write, then we're, we're fine with, with that deal. And pretty much the time they're indie talaga sila eh. They released, uh, I think, two albums ata eh, before uh, magkaroon sila ng album sa label eh. So, medyo matagal din yung process before talaga parang pumayag sila na, sige, this time mag-ano na tayo, mag-label na tayo. Even when we got signed, we were, you know, we're just here to represent Cebu. Mga bisita lang tayo dito, so let's just run with it. So everything that came after that was parang unexpected and parang blessing siya. And we never really expected anything like that, di ba? We were content playing in Cebu. It just so happened we were invited here in Manila and we never really thought anything out of it. Nag-decide na kami na dito na kami mag-stay, ganyan. Yun, gig, kahit saan, kahit saan kami, ano, na napapadpad. <laughs> Yun, hanggang sa naging ganito. <laughs>